Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another DCS World in-game flying mission. This one is the AIM-9s, basically just the simple short-range heat seekers and um, fairly simple uh, missiles to get the hang of and to be able to use, but for sake of uh, completion or whatever, uh, we're going to be going through all of them that are in-game, so the AIM-9s are up, so let's fly this one. In this lesson, we'll learn about how to use the AIM-9L and M versions of the venerable Sidewinder short-range infrared guided air-to-air -air missile. Using a cooled infrared seeker, the Sidewinder locks onto the hot elements of a target, most often the engines. Best used in close-range dogfights, the Sidewinder is a fire and forget after launch. However, the Sidewinder can be decoyed by flares and is less effective against ground clutter. Today we're looking at the L and M versions. The AIM-9L, or Lima, entered production in 1977 and was the first all-aspect homing Sidewinder, meaning it could get a lock on a target at any aspect angle. However, a rear aspect provides much better detection. The mic or AIM-9M, is an improved version of the Lima with better flare rejection and a reduced smoke motor. In a later lesson, we'll take a look at the AIM-9X and the joint helmet mounted queuing system. The Sidewinder can be used on both boresight mode and slaved to a radar locked target. I currently had the lesson paused as we discuss some of its features. To select a Sidewinder, press down on the weapon select switch or press left shift and S. Do this now. Bam. When selected with no target locked on radar, the Sidewinder will be in boresight mode. This is indicated by the single reticle on the HUD that indicates the seeker line of sight. Below on the HUD, you will notice the name of the weapon, 9M in this case, and the number of missiles remaining to the right. To employ a Sidewinder in this mode, fly your Hornet to place the reticle over a target and wait for the seeker tone to change to a higher pitch. This indicates the seeker sees and is tracking the target. You could then launch the missile by pulling the trigger or pressing the spacebar. To allow the seeker to self-track the target, press the cage uncage button on your throttle or press C when you hear the lock tone. Once self-tracking, the seeker will automatically follow the target within its seeker field of regard. Before trying this though, let's first take a closer look at the AIM-9 format page on the left DDI. Press spacebar to continue. All right. As with the AA gun, you have the remaining gun rounds and master arm indications. Along the wing form are indications for AIM-9 loading. 9L indicates stations with AIM-9L, and 9M indicates stations with AIM-9M. The selected station includes an SEL for selected below it. To cycle through AIM-9 stations, press the AIM-9 select switch on the weapon select switch or press left shift S. This allows you to switch between AIM-9L and AIM-9M versions. When you are ready, press spacebar and I will unpause the lesson. All right, let's do it. You now have two MiG-29 drone targets ahead of you. Fly to place the reticle over one of them until you hear a higher pitched lock tone. You can either launch an AIM-9 now by pressing the trigger on the stick or spacebar on the keyboard, or initiate a self-track by pressing the cage uncage button on the throttle or pressing C. Once self-tracking, launch an AIM-9. It may take more than one to bring down the MiG. Splash one. Keep an eye on the second MiG-29 and follow it. We will use a radar slave to track for that one. Follow the second drone. To lock up the second drone on radar, press up on the sensor select switch or press right alt and semicolon. This will place the radar in air combat maneuvering or ACM mode. Keep following the second drone. When ACM mode is first selected, the boresight auto acquisition mode is selected. All right. This is indicated by the dashed circle on the HUD. To lock up the target, Fly to place the target within the dashed circle and have the target under 10 miles away. Got him locked up. Space Fly bar. to keep the target at about one mile to keep the radar locked. 
On the HUD is a large, solid circle that acts as both the AIM-9 allowable steering error circle and as the normalized in-range display, or NERD circle. Fly to keep the small steering dot inside the circle to give the missile the best chance of reaching the target. Along the outside of the circle are two triangle NERD indications. The one at the 6 o'clock position is the that missile one? maximum range, also called RMAX. And the other is the missile minimum range, called R-min. That one. The line inscribing the circle indicates target range. And you want this between R-max and R-min to launch the missile. Also on the HUD is a box or diamond that indicates the line of sight to the locked target. And the smaller circle indicates the AIM-9 seeker line of sight. If you see a large X across the HUD in radar display, your range to the target is less than the minimum range indication. When the target is between R-Max and R-Min, the steering dot is inside the ASE circle, and the weapon is armed, the shoot cue will appear, and you can launch the missile by pulling the trigger on your stick. Whammo! Nice job. You downed the second drone. Some final thoughts on using the AIM-9. First, the seeker can better track a target from behind than in front. Second, if the target is expending flares, it may decoy your missile. Third, the AIM-9 does not have a large warhead, so it may take more than one to bring down a target. Press escape to end the lesson. And there you have it, folks. Go ahead and quit that one. Oh, it didn't give me the kills. So, there's your AIM-9 uh, in-flight training mission and we've got the 120 the air to ground gun rockets so we've got a few more to get through and then we're probably going to start doing some missions and a couple of campaigns so hope you guys stick around for that and i will see you all next time peace